Welcome all. What at Signet we have planned that we'll do something on uh, maybe we call it a discussion. We'll call it text technology by Charcha. Charcha by text name. So this is a new concept that we are planning to come up where we will discuss multiple aspects of uh, various Signet GSP offerings and how the GSP fintech things are going on all across. So today we have Neeraj and Viral both. Uh, Neeraj being MD and taking the lead on the Signet GSP thing and Viral is helping us as a lead analyst on the Signet GSP tool. Now we will we'll touch upon few aspects today on the uh, maybe I would say the most burning hot topic today of uh, GSPI 9 and 9C5. Uh, thanks, Neeraj. Thanks, Neeraj. Thanks. So, first, Neeraj, uh, uh, GSPI 9 extension. Now it has been extended, I would say, now three times. What's your view about the extension per se? I would say extension is a welcome by the industry to extend, but uh, at the same time, the solutions that they seek in terms of understanding of the data requirement for 9 and 9c is not being clarified sorted out or no clarity is coming onto it and that leaves them at the same stage so the primary concern when i'm talking to so many people and i'm with clients maybe every week uh, and they may be mid-sized clients large size clients uh, maybe the top 50 or top 100 companies in the country and their challenge is that if we would have known that these are the data requirements which are going to come up in terms of our annual return filings we would have been more prepared my argument to them is if you would have read the law better and you would have seen the initial forms very clearly then this data requirement is nothing more than what has been specified into it or I joke on a lighter tone with them. If it would have been on Signet GSP from day one, then the data would have been populated automatically to a maximum extent. But all said and done, the struggle is still there. I read into a newspaper cutting that 30% of the people have filed their nine. But that would have mostly been the zero part or nil return guys or a low return guys who would have done that. Not a large organizations have really filed their nine and i was just checking with uh, hardik uh, onto the part of our ca and i said out of the 11 or 12 companies that we have how many nine he has filed and he told me that we have filed nine of about 10 of them so that also happened only uh, last, week. last week so that is a challenge with them and nine c so we have not filed even a single one up till now so these are the major challenges and my question to Viral is how do we really take care of the data aspects of it? So a very simple challenge if I go to the government portal, I have to extract data at every, sim I would say GSTN level and every month level. I would say add that data into a single form and compare it with my financials which are not at a GSTN level so what are the other challenges people are facing okay so if you talk about the challenges by and large since 2017-18 the inception of gst that that is how i would put uh, there has been continuous changes in law and uh, rules that has been coming up from the government's end and that is where the people kept on filing the return whether correctly incorrectly they absolutely didn't know about it now if we talk about filing of gst or nine GSTR 9 filing is all about reconciling the GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B returns which they have done over the period of time. Now if they were to comply by the rules and laws quite quickly, at some point of time they weren't about to do it, those all things would require to be corrected in GSTR 9. Though it does not have any direct impact on the liability or ITC but the difference between what they have done in GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B is a challenge. From the technical perspective, the utilities provided by government, they were not updated since the last two days when the extension was provided by the government. So that is one challenge. As Neeraj talked about that how we can help in doing the same, 
if the entire data for filing of GSTR 1 or 3B be uploaded into Signet GSP, we are auto populating. There are, I would like to portray the complexity of GSTR 9. There are approximately 19 sections and more than 300 boxes that requires to be filled into the entire return. Imagine the level of complexity and the depth a taxpayer needs to go in. If the data were there into the Signet GSP, the, the filing of returns would have been done into G Signet GSP. We are auto populating more sections than what GST portal is providing or what is providing by the API. The simple reason is being GSTR2 was discontinued. As GSTR2 was discontinued, obviously government does not have that data with them. But in Signet GSP, we are assuming GSTR2 to be uploaded by the taxpayer for the reconciliation purposes. We already have that data. So if we talk about reconciling the IDC part, reconciling uh, GSTR2A with the GSTR2 and portraying the figure into GSTR9, that's all pretty much easy out there. So this is what I would like to comment here. This, this is very interesting. One question we just as a normal, I was talking to many people on a friend circle. So they are saying that when GSTR nine is to be filed, I have to pull out all my past returns and do either a JSON compilation, Excel compilation, whatever it is. But then you have to calculate theoretical for eight or nine months period and populate that into GSTR nine. Now. Suppose someone is not using Signet GSP from day one because this we are talking for financial 1780. Maybe there was not much awareness at that time about GSP per se. So people were using their own means and ways to file their return. Now where Signet GSP can help those people today? So I would touch base on two different points that you raised. One is I was with one of the clients uh, last week and they said that uh, there are two aspects of the entire GST regime. One is the law, second is the GSTN network and then he said third is you and he mentioned specifically third is you. So I said okay, why me and he said okay, from day one whenever we had a meeting and luckily they were with us from uh, July 17 days so that was their good luck he said okay, we did not compromise in terms of data collection that you asked us to do from day beginning day one and that is the only reason today we are not even bothered we have the line wise HSN uh, number information is also available we religiously uploaded everything in terms of purchase that we wanted to upload into the GST into the Signet GSP portal and that is the reason we have the data very clearly aware and maybe he had that foresight or something that he was able to understand that the compliance angle and the law may not work very closely together and there would be a difference between the two and compliance still has to be done. So that was his advantage where he had a data. The clients who do not have a data or were not with Signet yes. GSP, for very large clients, like you mentioned that you have to get the data of 8-9 months, add it to a JSON and get it into an Excel sheet. But what do I do if I have 5 lakh line items or 10 lakh line items per How month per month into a each state? How do I really manage? And in that particular case, we came up with an audit tool wherein we help them to reconcile their old data. So took the data from July 17 till March mm -hmm. 2000, uh, sorry, July 17 to March 2018, uh, took the JV data, took the pulled the signet, uh, pulled the data from GSTN, what was uploaded by them either through a, I would put it a ASP, GSP solution or directly onto the government portal, we reverse pulled that data, uploaded that data and gave them a three-way reconciliation to identify what are the missing entries, what is not there. And they again came back, many clients came back and said, we do not have enough manpower even to do that exercise. So we even help with our managed services into that area that we help them to do a three-way reconciliation, identify the missing entries and really the basic challenge is the way we handle data or the way we handle invoices. 
So I'll give you a very, and being a chartered accountant, you will understand very clearly that when they do a data entry of a purchase invoice, it has five different line items. Each one has to be accounted into a different, different quote or different cost. expense. So the invoice is created as 1, 2, 3, 4, X1, X2, X3, X4. Mm -hmm. And it goes into two different line items. So when the purchase data comes in, the same invoice has four different line items. When it comes into Signet GSTN, is a two-way. It has a single line item. Is a tax code-wise bifurcation, and the reconciliation is a major pain point. Now, and a very interesting factor, and I'll ask, like to ask this question to Viral, is that the GSTN nine auto-populated data by GSTN says X value. GSTN nine auto-populated data in two-way has a Y value. And again, the data that you collaborate into Signet has a Z value because that you are doing as a API pool. Again, people are having to go through a three-way reconciliation of which is actually the right data. And when you get an auto-populated summary data and you do not have a transaction level information, it is a struggle how you really manage that. So, what is your take on to it? How does a client need to approach how to reconcile that part? Okay. So, there are probably three sides of it. One side being that the actual reconciliation that requires to be happening between the GST data, what have been furnished in the GST system and the system summary. So, GST system uh, data. When we talk about GST system data, it's actually depends on the reconciliation between a signet GSP and the GST data actually depends on the approach a taxpayer has used to put on their data in order to file GST or 9. As a simple example, Neeraj, they have been furnishing data into signet GSP from day one is an example. Now, when we talk about the actual ops team who are generating the invoices, uploading the invoices into GST system or signet GSP, what happens is certain invoices, amendments, they go in, go onto the GST portal and directly do it. At certain point in time, they miss out the invoices to be furnished into GST system, but they have done into uh, Signet GSP. So, there is a deficit of certain documents in GST system. There is a chances of deficit of documents which there in the Signet GSP system. Now, as I previously said, Filing of GSTR 9 is actually a reconciling of GSTR 1 and 3B. If the data in Signet GSP is not present in GST portal and vice versa, then obviously the reconciliation is not going to take place. So as a first measure, what we have provided in Signet GSP as a feature is you sync the entire data that is available onto the GST system first to the Signet GSP. So what this will do is any data which is missing into Signet GSP would be synced. So Just that data would come from GST. GST system. And second thing, you also have data from the financials which is uploaded onto the Signet yes. GSP. Okay. So that would be a differentiator between yeah, the reconciliation between the two will happen into Signet, Signet GST. GST. And I can reconstruct my pseudo 3B or I can reconstruct my GST or 1A data from the existing one. So Signet GSP had a vision right from the day one. That is what I would put. If you are a regular taxpayer filing returns from Signet GSP and if you have seen the feature side, right from the day one we have provided a reconciliation between GST summary and Signet GSP system summary yes. at a month level for GSTR1 as well as GSTR3B. We had foresightedness enough that at certain point in time this would be required by the taxpayers and if a taxpayer would have been complying this from the day one, I would say that there are some, some of our clients Neeraj and even if we talk about Signet Infotech as a whole and filing of returns for our own set of companies, we have been doing this from the day one. Mm -hmm. We have, I would say, cut down to about 30% of difficulties filing GSTR 9 and that is the reason what Neeraj mentioned, we are able to file GSTR 9 written for 9 companies 
and that is pretty much smoothly this is the only reason this is because if you comply from the day one if you understand what requires to be done from the day one if you understand what solution will help you comply from the day one you are at a right track and you would be able to file the returns right from the day one and one funny point that always comes up in a discussion and people say that government said you don't need to upload this data into the returns so i said government said that okay we are simplifying don't upload this data or a simplified 3b came into a uh, picture government never said that okay, this data you don't maintain it at your end it will not be required to be uploaded into the future so that is a kind of a confusion with people and the change in terms of mindset is still not happening because i am seeing the data on a daily basis when we go to a client for a new discussion they will say oh we have air all the data everything perfectly done everything is very nice and i say what is the amount of unreconciled amount and i have i am even scared to mention them on a video that what is the unreconciled amount at different level the challenge is coming and when we see the data itself it's a challenge and this is specifically because the erps that have been developed or whatever erps that are there in the market are really not made for a tax compliance purpose the tax com- tax or the technology that is required for this compliance is not there in built or available into that stage now law is not going to follow the erps the erps or the compliance softwares will have to follow the law and that is a major gap in terms of mindset which needs to be brought in is it coming no it is still a kind of a reluctant process on how to comply and the challenge is a still there second major problem viral is i have seen at multiple different clients level that they have all the facilities into our software yes but they are not actually exploring it completely or many times are not even aware of into it so that is how do we really help them in terms of more exploration or walk through through the 99c requirements which is there so as a part of a development process uh, we push out release notes regularly so as soon as new functionality or new feature that comes into signet gsp we push out release notes to our clients customers so they can read out the release notes there are screenshots that are steps that are mentioned into the release notes that ca- that can make make them help aware about what functionalities have been brought into the signet gsp that is one part that we are doing second part we are doing for our existing stakeholders as well as for the uh for the uh, market is that we are doing webinars so regular webinars helps tech payers to know what functionalities are being brought into signet gsp as a whole we have been doing this since the inception of signet gsp the day one we have been doing this and to your question neeraj if a tech payer is regularly attending our webinars if a tech payer are regularly reading our release notes and throwing back questions to us as a development team i would love to hear back from the tech payers that what difficulties they are facing or what things they wish to know more about the functionalities that we are doing if we have such feedback right from the market right from the tech payers that are using our application that would help us and help them to comply with the solution as well as the practices that have been put forward by uh, government okay thanks viral and that is something that we are doing that uh, entire product road map of what we are developing is based on the feedback that we get from the market, market. so entire product backlog is based on what people expect the type of changes that they want and how it can help them comply better that is the entire product road map so that is the this is what are the other challenges from the financial side or from the accounting perspective you are seeing yeah. in complying in the new returns that are going to come in 
Okay, on the new reader. First, uh, before I go to the new reader, I'll just comment on what my experience has been on the DSTR. That would be great, yeah. Yeah, because, see, for any, so there's a buzz in the market that DSTR 9 is very, you know, it's a very bulky document, you have to all, do all these things. I was obviously a bit scared, but when I worked with my team and saw that where we are, since we are using the Signal DSP from day one, obviously there are certain advantages, but few things I like to mention. First, uh, the HSN information. Okay. Though I would say government has been nice enough to you know not uh, make it compulsory for all and provide certain things. So those details are available. Though GSTR two has been discontinued, those details we have been maintaining. So that's a first advantage that we have. Uh, second, now you have to give bifurcation of your input services, uh, ITC into your services and capital goods for that reversal of ITC whenever it's needed. So that information was published or I would say the pushed by us in my first DSTR 1 returns. So all uh, GSTR 3B1, all this. So this information is helping me. So I would say almost everything is available when I see the GSTR 9 for my uh, companies. Second, we also provide this feature of what is there on the portal on the government portal and what has been pushed by the signal GSP. This gives a different level of comfort that you have this reconciliation of let's say there is a mismatch then see when you actually see the actual usage of filing GSP and 9, uh, nine you, we are able to uh, see both the figures at the same time. So if there is a difference you can identify and look first on that. Your focus will go there and then the rest things will come. Right. So that's a very unique feature that we have and that has helped, uh, helped us a lot. That has saved a lot of time. And I would say maybe uh, 9C are yet to be filed. Maybe yes. the auditors are more busy now than the taxpayers. So yes. that's, that's one of the things. Right. So it is more pending on the auditor <laughs> side for <laughs> the reports side. to come in. <laughs> There's a lot of work to do and so that's that's a separate uh, thing. Okay, and, and on the new return, I think the new return are going to be very easy, especially the search, sugar. Uh, it appears to be very, very user friendly. There are certain, I would say, uh, ease of filing things which are available. Now, the only thing is how it is being implemented, how maybe will the APIs would be available and whenever we'll be able to roll out, government is actually requesting for yeah. solutions. We have given already a couple of yes. I think the new return would be very simple as compared to what we have right now. I am very hopeful that this will simplify many of the things. It will, let's see how the APIs and everything is available. Yes, so I would comment that new return is basically would be a blessing in disguise from the start of it. First reason being the due date of the, ex the, due date of extension of GSTR 9. It would be colliding with the due date of when the new returns will be starting. So October we are starting with the new returns. Again a taxpayer will have to comply with it. Second due date of filing of income tax. That would be com coming uh, just between the due date of filing the GSTR 9 return and starting of this. So while the taxpayers would be busy in complying and finishing the filing of GSTR 9 return, they will also be needing to comply with the new standards of the returns that have been brought forward by the government. Government has taken a step ahead to furnish the APIs well ahead of uh, when they are planning to launch. So this has been a big change from the uh, GSTN's end that I would say. And that is helping quite a lot to ASP, GSPs that are there in the market so that they can make their software compliant enough well before when actually the things will be rolling out. And a very interesting point from Signet GSP that we have come up with a completely new system for the new returns. Mm -hmm. And that is much, much more user friendly. We have all the experience that we had for last two years, we have added into the new systems. And the type of reports and the data that will be required just comes out into the flesh. So I would say people are looking forward to that. And I would really love that coming in fast enough uh, for the people to explore it. 
I think thank you both for the time today for this uh, session and really appreciate it. And let's do much more sessions on to sure. each of the topics so that we can transfer. Thanks, Neeraj, for providing the inputs. Thank you. Thanks, Nisa. Thank